I'm a, a priest and a writer for The Guardian. Um, and uh, I was asked to come and just handed the microphone. And it's an extraordinary thing, that is. Um, I've already done church this morning, so I won't uh, treat this as if it was another of those occasions. Um, but um, God is my thing, and so God is what I will in some way talk about. Um, I think my great... I was just sitting quietly before this started, thinking about what my great political motto for change, if I had one, was. And there's a wonderful poem by Wallace Stevens called The Man with the Blue Guitar. And there's a line in it uh, which goes, but play you must a tune beyond us, yet ourselves. A tune upon the blue guitar of things exactly as they are. And I love that line but play you must a tune beyond us yet ourselves. Because it captures something for me of the idea that uh, politics is an act of the imagination. It's about uh, imagining something greater, bigger, better, um, something considerably beyond. And yet also, because it's politics, it's also uh, imagining something that's exactly about us as human beings, exactly as we are. And that complicated rhythm of the imagination, the beyond, that which is other, and that which is e exactly as we are. And it seems to me that um, one, of the, one of the things that most frustrates me about contemporary politics is its lack of imagination and its, its lack of the sort of the big picture. And I suppose, you know, I mean, I've been watching, you know, you've been watching Wolf Hall. I don't know if people have been watching Wolf Hall, which has just been fantastic, which for me is a reminder of the way in which imagination, and this is obviously a, a large th theological aspect to this, but the way in which the imagination can have astonishing political consequences. Um, so you start, you know, that the key event in Wolf Hall, we haven't met the person, but is actually what's going on so much behind is, is William Tyndall's translation of the Bible uh, into English. This is just a really simple guy from uh, Gloucestershire who, who is, you know, now exiled He's the most wanted man in, in Europe, ends up being um, hung, drawn, and quartered, and burnt, and whatever, what, all the rest of it in Belgium. And this man is just single-handedly single just translating the Bible into English, and everybody is freaked. And they're sort of right to be freaked, because the ideas that are there, when ordinary people start to read them, and Tyndall's whole thing was, you know, to get ordinary people to read it, rather than this being, um, uh, these are ideas that would be mediated simply by the political elite, which was the, the Roman Catholic Church, that, that, that revolution would come out of these ideas. Revolution came out of these ideas. I mean, if it wasn't for that translation of the Bible, you wouldn't have the diggers, you wouldn't have the levelers, you wouldn't have people sitting in my old church in Putney, talking about democracy for the very first time in this country. The Putney debates uh, were the very first time people were probably talking about democracy in this country, and they would not have been talking about democracy. The diggers would not be talking about, and Wynne Stanley talking about common ownership. They wouldn't be talking about um, what is the nature of the king, and is this form of authority legitimate, all of those huge, big political ideas, nature of private property, all of that happened because a singular individual was prepared to translate the Bible into English and make those ideas available. Now, so I, I, I think uh, Tyndall's a, a hero, um, but my, my point is, and I really want to just open up to questions about this. I thought we might just have a, more of a conversation and, in a second. But my point about this is it does seem to me that we have a, a, a real lack of uh, political imagination in this country. We don't have the same sort of imaginative literature. And obviously, for me, the Bible is a form of 
imaginative literature that has significant political consequences. But we just, it seems to me that we don't have, uh, we, we have the absence of this, this uh, imaginative literature. And because of that, we, we, uh, our politics ends up being technocratic, administrative, uh, lacking in, in the big picture. So, and I don't know where that's going to come from. I, 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 that's, that, for me, is the, the idea of a change that is, that is significant, that, that imagines a world you know, far greater than the one that we have, requires primarily, uh, for me at least, a work of, of the imagination. So I, I want to encourage the poets, the dreamers, uh, the people to realize that, you know, just a vision, to use a very old-fashioned uh, word associated with nutters and weirdos and people, but a vision of a different world, um, uh, whether that be Blake, these are some of my heroes, or Tyndall in the translation of the New Testament, are describing something. I really don't see those people out there. Please tell me I am wrong. But that, for me, is the is the core of where change happens.